Come on, Vintage Church, let's worship. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Met empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. But you came along and put me back together. Satisfied here in your love, and we see there's nothing better. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, I. the God of the mountain is the God of the valley and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing
I think you're done yet though. I think you got a little second wind. I, I, wanna, I wanna step into this moment right now like I did this past week. I had the privilege of joining with pastors from all over our city, from all over our city. We joined on top of Mount Washington right down the street from our PGH city location. And, and we joined in prayer asking for Jesus to tear down walls to break chains, to bring 
healing into lives in this city, to move in such a way that Jesus alone would receive all glory and honor and praise. And so I just wanna declare those truths again. Let's, let's sing this out loud again. Grace, lead us into God's presence again. And let's ask the Lord Jesus to do these things in our lives right now, in our city right now, in this season of COVID right now. We aren't fighting for victory. We are victorious in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And he has declared that we aren't making him Lord of this city. He is the Lord of this city. So sing it, come on. Jesus changes everything. He does, let's go. preaching yet this morning we love you so much church family if I haven't had a chance to meet you my name is Rob Wilton I serve as the lead pastor of Vintage Church and I want to welcome you especially if you're first time guest with us we consider you our VIP check out the link that's posted on our online gathering right now you can uh, fill out go to our website vcmovement.com and you'll find all these different things if you could fill out this form we want to send you a gift and introduce you into what we believe is a pretty cool family now I just gotta kind of set the the expectations um, we're not a perfect family uh, we don't have everything together we are imperfect in many ways but we serve a perfect Jesus and this Jesus changes everything in just a few moments, I'm going to open up God's Word and, and preach from the book of Proverbs as we continue our series called In the Summer. And I believe that in this moment, and so I want to ask you, church family, would you join me in prayer right now? In this moment, as we go into our time, would we just unite together in prayer, asking in this moment for Jesus to change everything? For those of us who right now don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I pray that Jesus would change everything. For those of us who know Jesus, who need just some encouragement in our life right now, because life is hard right now, I pray for Jesus to change everything. So let's prepare for the Word of God together in prayer. Lord Jesus, what an incredible time to just worship you with my church family today. God, I, I just pray, Lord, as as we're scattered throughout our city, we're so eager and ready to, to reopen and come back together in person. But Lord, you've got us in this season right now, scattered throughout our city, worshiping online. God, I pray that in this moment, God, I pray that the power of your gospel would change everything. Lord Jesus, thank you for changing my life. Lord, thank you for for bringing salvation into my life. God, thank you for doing that in Ken's life as we celebrated his baptism this past week. God, would you do it again? Would, would you change people's lives? We believe, Lord Jesus, that you can do this. And so lead us as we walk through your word by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Y'all check out this video. There's a whole lot of opinions in the world right now And I don't even know what they be talking about But there's one thing that I can't live without That's our love Oh, that's our love In the summer In the summer 
Open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs as we continue our series in the summer. As we kind of kick this off, we looked at this truth that our church family really needs God's wisdom. How many of you guys would testify to that right now? Like, I'm so tired of worldly wisdom. I'm so tired of the government, government giving me solutions or uh, friends giving me ideas. No, I want God and his word right now. And so we looked at in Proverbs chapter 1 how the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding or wisdom. And so we're going to God. We're humbling ourselves before God. Last week, we talked about the family, and we had some fun not only uh, calling out the men, but if you were with us for Sunday night at our PGH City location, we called out our ladies too, and we talked about the importance of being a family that loves wisdom and, and what that looks like, and uh, we just, you know, unpack something that's, that's honestly true. A lot of what we're going through in the world today, the challenges, the problems that we're facing, um, would be solved today if at the home we pursued and lived out and loved and listened to God's wisdom. And so we want to be people like that. Today, we're going to talk about friendship, all right? The importance of friendship. So title today is Lean on Friends. Last week, love your family. This week, lean on friends. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Um, this is the word of the Lord. It's a really small verse, but this is going to be kind of like a, a theme verse for us in this sermon this week. Remember, as I shared with you, if you try and read through all of Proverbs, you're going to kind of get a little bit like confused at times because it goes from one thing to the next. One pastor called the book of Proverbs a bunch of God tweets, right? Short, succinct uh, words of wisdom. Here's one of them. It's one of my favorites. Proverbs 17, 17 says this, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Lean on friends. Um, just in case some of you guys are struggling right now, we're gonna talk about the importance of friendship, um, and we're going to talk about what biblical friendship looks like today. Um, but maybe some of you guys need some help making friends. So I got a few useful tips to help you make new friends, all right? Number one, I kind of just, you know, looked at this, and here's some simple tips. Number one, be yourself. <laughs> be real, all right? I promise you, even if you are the craziest weirdo in all the group, there are a lot of people that would love you just as you are. Look at how many friends I have. I'm probably the craziest weirdo you'll ever meet in your entire life. Be yourself. Number two, start with people you know. So many of us are looking beyond the people that are right in front of us. And I want to encourage you, start with the people you know. You've got some great candidates for friendship in the circles that you're already in. How about this? Use technology. Number three. My brother is thankful to, for technology. He has a wife today because of technology. He met his wife on eHarmony, and uh, some of you guys might need to check that out too. We're praying for some of you guys to check that out because you need a spouse in a major way. Uh, number four, give people a chance. Give people a chance. Start out giving people the benefit of the doubt. I believe I'm going to have a great friendship in this. That's good advice. How about this? Number five, ask questions. One of the reasons why you might not have a friend is because you just yap all day long in front of people. Stop yapping. Ask somebody a question and get to know them instead of you telling them about yourself. Number six, get out there. Put away the games, get off Netflix, and hit the town. I know it looks weird in this COVID season, but get out there. And then number seven, when you're out there, be there. I know I'm guilty as much as any of you guys. Sometimes I'll go out, I'm hanging with my friends, enjoying dinner, and I look around and every single one of us are on our phones. It's like we plan this dinner to hang out, but we're somewhere else. You got to be there. How about this? Keep in touch. So if you hand out a number, 
I just hung out with some pastors around town, and it was so cool, praying over our city. We were on the news and stuff like that, just believing God and his miracles and his gospel to reign in this city. And afterwards, we exchanged some numbers. Well, I kind of have a, a, a deal, like when I exchange a number, because I'll forget, I make sure that I send my contact card to that person right after, so at least I remember who it is. Now, I've got to keep in touch, right? We're going to be good friends. We've got to keep in touch. How about this? Number nine, join groups. Uh, we think it'd be really cool for you to maybe check out Vintage Church. If you're worshiping with us online today, uh, we've got an amazing group of people here that would love to become friends with you. Lastly, know when to offer information. You might not have any friends because you're that person, right? You take the conversation to a bad level. I used to have a friend in New Orleans, and uh, we had kind of a code, he and I, because he was so uh, inappropriate most of the time, and he would just say too much, TMI, too much information. So I told him, every time you're going to that point, I'm gonna do this, and then it's time for you to shut up, because he was kicking some of my friends out of our lives, and I wanted those friends in my life. I still loved him as a friend, but I was being honest with him, all right? How about fun things to do with your friends when you don't have much money? How about a potluck dinner party? That's a cool way. Uh, I love when our V groups and stuff get together for potluck. A movie marathon. Uh, maybe one of y'all want to invite me to finally watch Star Wars for the first time in my life. Never seen it. Um, you know, I've never really been interested in Chewbacca and uh, Spock and, and all those guys on Star Wars. I know that's not Star Wars, that's Star Trek, but whatever. Uh, how about this? Go to a park, fishing, camping. That's a cool thing for you to do with friends. How about this? Volunteer together. One of my favorite things was this past week, seeing so many volunteers come out and serve with our Send Relief Center. It was so fun doing that. Number five, play board games. Just don't invite me to that. I hate board games. I don't like doing it. Um, my family tries to make me play board games every time we go to the beach. I hate it. Uh, number six, go to church. Go to church. There's a lot of great people at church. There's a lot of people with our Vintage Church family. And I'm going to share with you in a few moments about our reopening plan. We'd love to have you as we come back together in person. Tim Keller says this about friendship. You will not make it in life without building, forging, and keeping friendships. There's a great little book. We'll try and put it maybe in a link for you to check it out on Facebook and on YouTube right now. But it's a, it's a small book. Most of the books I like are small books, just to let you know. Um, but uh, it says this. The title is The Company We Keep. It's by a guy named Jonathan Holmes. Uh, he writes a bunch of things. Let's talk about the biblical foundation of friendship. Number one, he talks about this in his book, that friendship is found in God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The friendship in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is the very image that we were created to reflect. Uh, number two, friendship is not only found in God, friendship is necessary in life. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 says this, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. And so God fulfilled the purposes of life by giving us friends. This first picture of friendship was the relationship between Adam and Eve. Once again, here's a good Keller quote. He says this, God made us in such a way that we cannot enjoy paradise without friends. God made us in such a way that we cannot enjoy our joy without friends. Adam had a perfect quiet time every day, right? So you parents right now who are trying to worship Jesus right now as your son or daughter is punching you in the face, you think that you just need a quiet day all by yourself. Well, that is not going to be all that you need because Adam had a perfect quiet time every day, 24 hours, never had a dry one, and yet he needed people. He needed friends. So we're learning here that friendship is found in God. It's necessary in life. Number three, this author says, friendship was broken in sin. In Genesis chapter three, we know that there was shalom, there was 
peace. There was perfection with God that Adam and Eve walked in, in, in just perfection with God. Um, but sin happened. And because of that sin, there became this separation, this brokenness between not just God and man, but between man. Um, no longer were Adam and Eve in sync. There was shame. Um, Jonathan Holmes says this, as soon as sin appeared, we, we quickly became I. And human history has never been the same. You come over to my house, you'll hear this word. Mine, 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 mine. I'm constantly having to remind my kids, none of that's yours. I paid for that, that's mine. But even in that, that's a problem. I think one of the reasons why we see this brokenness is because there is definitely more about I than we. So friendship was broken in sin. Um, who in this room is thankful for this next point? Friendship, Scripture teaches us, was restored in Christ. In John 15, 13 through 15, it says this, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. I love that God's word says friends here. Verse 14, you are my friends. If you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I, God's word says, have called you friends. For all that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. Jesus laid down his life for us, and because of that, we are called his friends. Steve Timmis says this, at the cross, the Godhead's friendship was ruptured so that our friendship could be restored. Yes, we're going to talk about friendship between one another, but we ultimately want you to be a part of this friendship with God. That can only happen through salvation in Jesus Christ. Will you give your life to Jesus right now? You see, Jesus came, he lived, he died, he defeated sin, death, and hell so that you might have life and have it to the fullest. And he offers to all, as scripture shares, that if you would repent, that you'd confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, God's word says you will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So right now, would you pray to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Would you trust in Jesus? I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that right there in your living room, or as you're maybe watching this at a coffee shop right now, as you're worshiping with us, even later on in the week, you're going back and watching a replay of this. Would you right now take this moment to confess Jesus Christ as Lord? Let's pray. Father, I pray in this moment as we've just sung together so loudly, so boldly, Jesus, you change everything. Lord Jesus, would you change lives right now? And would you save sinners right now? God, I pray for those who are listening to me right now. I pray that your Holy Spirit would illuminate your gospel, would awaken affections to fall in love with you. God, in response to that, that people all over this city, all over this world, right now in this moment, trust in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and believe that maybe there's someone right now that has trusted in Jesus Christ for the first time in their life. If you believe that with me right now, if you're on our Facebook chat, would you do a whole bunch of thumbs ups and, and hearts right now? Would you just celebrate? Let's believe because Jesus promised he's going to keep changing this world one life at a time. And I believe he's done that today. If you have prayed to receive Jesus Christ, you're going to find a link right now. And it's just inviting you to trust in Jesus and let us know more about what's going on in your life. We want to send you maybe our I've Been Changed box with a Bible and a whole bunch of great resources that you can also find online that will help you walk with Jesus. We're talking about walking with Jesus here. 
Because the ultimate friendship that we can have is with Jesus Christ. And through that friendship, we get to enjoy a biblical friendship with each other. Love God, love people. Let's talk a little bit about this. I love the definition, once again, in this book that I'm recommending to you from Jonathan Holmes on what is biblical friendship. Biblical friendship exists when two or more people bound together by a common faith in Jesus Christ pursue him and his kingdom with intentionality and vulnerability. Rather than serving as an end in itself, biblical friendship serves primarily to bring glory to Christ who brought us into their friendship, into friendship with the Father. It is indispensable to the work of the gospel in the earth and an essential element of what God created us for. So let's get maybe a little bit more practical because I love that definition, but I I just want to get maybe specific on, on who is a biblical friend challenging us to be biblical friends, to pursue biblical friendship. And if I can say this before I jump into this, if I can tell you in the years that I've been a pastor, one of the easiest ways that the enemy takes people out is when he isolates people away from biblical community. And if I can just plead with you, I know we're in this quarantine season, and we've got all these superficial relationships because we're stuck to only hanging out with people online. Can I just plead with you to take a step forward towards someone that knows and loves Jesus, and just be bold, say, would you be my friend? Would you walk with me? We're going to talk about what it means for you to walk together, to truly be a biblical friend. But if I can just tell you, this pastor is pleading with you right now. Because I think all this isolation right now is doing damage in a lot of people's lives. And yes, only Jesus can save. We we don't depend upon people to save us. But one of the ways in which Jesus has called us to live for him and to make it each and every day, not falling to the temptation of the enemy, enemy is through biblical friendship. So let's talk about who is a biblical friend. Number one, it's a friend that is available. A friend that is available. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 says this. A man of many companions may come to ruin. You're like, say what, Pastor Rob? Didn't you tell me I have a bunch of friends? You got to have the right friends. And are they real friends? I'm going to whisper this because I don't know if you know this, but the friends on your Facebook aren't all your friends. They're just following you on social media and stalking you. We're talking about real friends. A man of many companions. I know some of probably the most famous people in the world. And they sometimes are the most lonely. We're not after crowds here, we're after friends. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You cannot be a good friend without availability. And in this first point, we're saying this, that who is a biblical friend? A friend is one that is available. Friends are there for each other. Um, They don't have to be around all the time. In in fact, if I can just tell you, um, my best friends are kind of the ones that I don't feel like I have to be around them all the time. Are you that way? Like, if, if I have to give an excuse for why I've not called you, you're probably not my good friend. Like, all my best friends are friends that I don't care if I haven't talked to them in a year and a half just because life be crazy, kids be crazy, we're in different cities now, we used to be friends. The moment we see each other, it's like, boom, we're right back in. My boys got to experience that this summer. One of my best friends that I played college basketball with about 40 pounds ago, uh, he and I took our families to a family camp and immediately they just fell in love with Uncle BJ because 
Uncle BJ and I, I'm fat, he's BJ, uh, we're boys, we're friends. I hadn't seen him in two years, and immediately we just hit it off. Um, listen, we don't have to be around all the time, but why do I not have to be around there all the time? It's because there's been moments with my friend BJ that I have been there, that I've been available. When he battled cancer, and I was there to walk with him, to love him. Can't be friends if you're not available. You got to be there for people. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, especially when the chips are down. True friendships are, are there even when it costs them something. True friendships are there even when the PR starts to attack you and they don't care. They'll still stand by you in public, online. That's real friendship. It's biblical friendship. Number two, a true biblical friend is a friend that is honest. A friend that is honest. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5 through 6, check this out. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Um, listen, a biblical friend is a friend that is honest. Truth telling is the best from a friend. My friends have given me, I'm just keeping it real, the toughest words. And if I could just say this, if you're afraid to say what really needs to be said, then you are not a real friend. If you love a person, you will never hide love from that person. Now, over the years as a pastor, I've been accused at certain points, Rob, you don't want to hear correction, because I send you that amazing email with all the things you're doing wrong in leading our church. And I'll just tell you, first of all, I've learned something that Billy Graham learned a long time ago. Turn your critics into your coaches. So anybody that says anything to me, I learned a long time ago to not just brush it off. There might be some truth in it, and I want to grow and I want to learn from it. But if our only interaction is a random email you ain't my friend. I promise you, I have friends that call me out. I have friends that are there for me. And my true friends that have been available in my life, I welcome their critique and love in my life. Do you have someone like that? Do you have someone that's not scared to hurt your feelings because they love you too much? See, this is a picture of true biblical friendship. Number three, a biblical friend is a friend that is trustworthy. That is trustworthy, not just available, not just honest, but that is trustworthy. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 13 says this, Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing Cover. Now, let's just be honest. Um, building trust takes time. It takes time. If, if you're in a relationship that's been broken, you know. It, it takes a long time for wounds to be healed. All I want to encourage you to do, because if biblical friendship is one that reflects the gospel, Make sure that all along the way, if you've got a friend right now that stabbed you in the back or uh, maybe you guys are at a rift or whatever else, make sure you keep extending the same grace that you're demanding. This is the picture of the gospel. For Jesus Christ laid down his life <laughs> so that we could be friends. And I got news for you. It wasn't just because we were good friends to him. No, we've sinned against him. We've cursed him. We've waged war against everything that he wants in this world, and yet he still loved us. God demonstrated his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But a true friend is one that is trustworthy. 
And if your yes is going to be yes, let it be yes. If your no is going to be no, let it be no. Let us be people that when people confide in us, we are found trustworthy. If I can just uh, confess, I, I battle at certain points. Uh, so does Jake and the collision of us two together. Jake, our arts pastor, sometimes overwhelms some people, but we both suffer from sarcasm. Uh, people will hang out with us and think we really hate each other, but we're just making fun of each other. We're actually really close friends, and it's kind of our thing. I know it's kind of sick at times, but that's the way we roll. We've had to learn at certain points to put the sarcasm away because I actually want to be a friend in people's lives that people aren't cautious of, but one that they can trust. <laughs> Let's be trustworthy friends. Lastly, we want to be friends that bring victory. A biblical friend is a friend that brings victory. Listen to this. Proverbs 15, 22 says this. Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. I want as many people in my life to help me finish this race and be found faithful before King Jesus one day. Who in your life is giving you good counsel? Well, if you want to experience wisdom and success or victory in life, pursue yourself with biblical friends. And for some of you, I'm just going to keep it real, raise your standard of friendship. I see who you're hanging out with. There's nowhere to go but down. You need to put people around you that in all the areas of your weakness, you would say, that person's doing it better than me. That person knows more than me. That person would stretch me. Put yourself around people that are way ahead of you in life, that have accomplished more things, that have logged some more dumb tax than you. You know what dumb tax is? It's a bunch of mistakes that you've made. Talk to someone who's made the mistake before you have to make the mistake. Because we ultimately want to see the victory of Christ happen in our lives. I remember hitting my lid a few years ago and like strategically seeking out good counsel. And every single pastor that I reached out to was way ahead of me in life and everything. And it was amazing how just soaking myself around wise counsel like that began to raise my lid. Another Proverbs verse Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. So let's close with this. As the band begins to come up, I want to close by kind of landing the plane today in our journey on biblical friendship by answering the question, what is the purpose of biblical friendship? Remember we talked about this. Friendship is found in God. It's necessary in life. It was broken in sin, but it was restored in Christ. Amen? So what is the purpose of biblical friendship? You ready? So that the world may know the love of Jesus. <laughs> That's the purpose of biblical friendship. Not just so that you can laugh more, so you can have a good time. No, God created friendship to reflect the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke about this in John 17. John 17, he prays to the Father, and he's modeling for us this friendship he has with the Father and with the Spirit, and he says this, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that we just sung about together, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world, here's the purpose of friendship, he wants oneness in your life with your friends as the church. He wants oneness so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as I 
have loved you and you have loved me. You see, when biblical friendship happens, the world sees a picture of the gospel of Jesus so that the world will know. And this is made possible through the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we sing and respond right now, I, I want to take some moments to once again just invite you, would you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? For you cannot participate in biblical friendship without Jesus. For he does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So many times I fail as a friend. And yet, Jesus keeps restoring brokenness. For those of you who know and love Jesus Christ, I, I really want to plead with you as I've shared, seek out biblical friendship. It's so important right now. I'm not telling you to, to just stay online, like really seek it out. I know we might be restricted to a phone call. At least take that step. Get off of social media, have a phone call, FaceTime. Those you feel comfortable with, meet them at a park. Really open up, pursue these things, and then maybe walk through these things and say, you know what, I wanna be honest. I wanna be available. I wanna be one that brings victory. I wanna be trustworthy. Let's together link arms <laughs> in our friendship, modeling to the world the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, as we sing to you, we ask for you to change everything. And Lord Jesus, in this moment, would you save people by your grace and would you unite our church in biblical friendship in such a way that your glory would shine throughout this city and world. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray, amen. Oh 
have been blessed by the word of God today as we have worshiped Jesus Christ together. Let's once again just give Jesus a shout of praise on the chat, on YouTube, man. Listen, God has been so kind to us. Thanks again for joining us. If you're our VIP, please, you'll see a link there. Please go to this on our website, fill out the form. We wanna send you some information on how you can connect with our church. We also wanna continue to give faithfully to the Lord. You guys saw a little glimpse of, of what you guys give towards as we serve community meals, as we plant churches. Man, I love Cody's back there. Cody, we celebrate you, bro. Man, we're so excited. Cody's one of our church planning apprentices that's been with us. And when you give to Vintage Church, we want you to know that we support church plants like what Cody's doing out in the east side of Pittsburgh with Missio Day Community Church. It's gonna be incredible. We'll be giving you more information about his church family and all that God's doing there. Listen, I wanna close with a couple different announcements. Let's keep being faithful and giving and, and through responding and all these other different things. If you've trusted in Jesus, please follow up with us. But uh, I wanted to kind of share this with you. Now, I, I gotta let you know, I, I hope I don't have to prove to you that nobody really knows what's coming week to week. I mean, I thought my kids were starting school on time. Uh, we just found out that they're only going back to school September 2nd. And uh, me and Jake had to go and hit the weight room because we were a little angry with that, all right? I know some parents, you're not gonna bring your kids to school. 
the Smiths and the Wiltons, we can't wait for them to go back to school, okay? And I know we're all over the place in our different preferences, but this is what we wanted to kind of throw to you. We are going to shoot for August 16th for our official reopening as a church. And so we're gonna shoot for that Sunday. And on that Sunday, there will be a worship gathering at our PGH West location, which is where I'm at right now at 10 a.m. And then at our PGH City location on top of Mount Washington, that will be at 6 p.m., okay? The first and third Sunday of every single month, we have a community meal at five o'clock, like we did this past Sunday, that we would also love for you to be a part of. Now, I want you to know that we're already making this decision. For the first four weeks that we'll be back together, we're gonna have a series called Changed. We're gonna have family style worship, okay? And so what does that mean? We're not gonna have any of our V Kids programming. Um, if you come with your family and with your kids, we're gonna have everything set up so that you can sit together as a family. For those of you who are moms, nursing moms, we're gonna provide a room for you to go to and everything's gonna be put together. There's gonna be a website that you'll start to see with all the details, policies and procedures that we wanna have in place so that you can feel safe coming to worship. Now, if you don't feel ready yet to come to worship, we want you to know that that's okay. We are going to continue to worship Jesus like this online. And so we're gonna provide every Sunday at 10 a.m. this worship time. But here's what I wanna encourage our church as we close. I've just preached on biblical friendship. No matter what happens, we could find out a week from now that all of Pittsburgh has to go on lockdown again. I want you to know we're gonna keep worshiping like this. We wanna counter this season of isolation by really getting proactive with groups. We believe the best place for you to experience biblical friendship is in groups. And so there's three things that I wanna share with you. Starting on August 16th, if you don't feel comfortable yet coming to worship with us in person, we want you to throw a watch party with people that you feel comfortable with, okay? I wanna challenge some people, start next Sunday, throw a watch party. Invite some friends over to your house or a neighbor that you've been hanging out with a lot and worship Jesus in your living room or at a place that you agree to meet. Maybe some of you got TVs outside. You can watch TV outside, but you could watch worship together. We wanna have watch parties. Secondly, on August 16th, we're gonna encourage people to start forming life groups. Here's what a life group is, and you'll see it um, kind of explained here on uh, the feed here. Here's a life group. It's intentional life-on-life -life groups that meet throughout the year at various times and places that have the purpose of growing closer in friendship and with Jesus. Examples of these groups could be a running group, a mom's play date, golf buddies, dinner clubs, Bible studies, game nights, remember don't invite me for those, uh, prayer groups. We just want people to start doing life together. So we're gonna really give you some more information as we get towards August 16th, but we wanna encourage life groups to happen. And then after four weeks of worship together, we're gonna officially launch V groups. And guys, V groups will be more intentional time to take the sermons that we're going through each week and process them together. This fall, because it looks like it's just gonna be really difficult for us to do this in any other way, we're gonna provide a V group for our PGH West family and another one for our PGH City family. And both are gonna be on Zoom. Jake and myself are gonna lead those. You'll never know which one of us is gonna lead, so we're gonna kinda keep you guessing. But we're also gonna use this time. I'm so excited this fall we're gonna walk through the armor of God together. And we're going to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand firm in the gospel of Jesus. Had it been great to worship Jesus today? Are you excited about August 16th? We are. Let's pray that that happens. We really wanna reopen. This little uh, opportunity we had to worship Jesus outside was so powerful. It was so just encouraging to this pastor. We love you, we're here for you, church. We wanna be true friends, but you gotta also step out. Let's be available, let's be honest, 
Let's be trustworthy and let's bring victory in the name of Jesus in the people's lives. Lord Jesus, as we close out our time of worship today, we give you all glory and honor and praise. And in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, would you empower us to be true friends to people this week? And would you empower us to live the gospel, serve the city, and be the church? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Grace and peace.